And the lines are open at 011-542-2186. You can join us on social media at ANN7 TV. And you're welcome to engage us in studio. We have Lucky Take Show Transform RSA Deputy President Monsir Zianezi with the South African Liberty Foundation as their chairperson. He joins us on the phone line. Let's start with you, Mr. Take Show. Just in, in terms of the relationship between Advocate Nom Gobo Chiba and Advocate Kherin now, very tumultuous, a turbulent relationship that they've had. Can one and then surmise that uh, there could be a personal vendetta or not? Certainly, the, the, there is a, a personal vendetta because uh, Advocate Jiva was doing her work and it was a no-nonsense prostitute. Now, remember, uh, Advocate Jiva was really a progressive prostitute. Now, there were times where they came wanting her to do things that are wrong, and she couldn't allow that. And as a result of that, she became the enemy. But what is critical is for us also to, to clarify this thing that she was struck off the role. She's no more an advocate. It's, it's true she was struck off the role. But while she has been struck off the role, she appealed. Now, in terms of the law, when she has appealed, there are rules that are guiding us to say, when we have appealed, you remain an advocate. And I think we must, we must be sure that when we say she has been struck off the role, we must conclude that and not act as if she is no more an advocate. And the reason why she is still an advocate is because she is the one that felt that because there is this issue, I want to have a special leave to resolve my issues. So let's clarify that. Okay, that there's a process in place. Uh, yes, that, you know, there is a process. She has gone to. She, to she is still appeal. qualified as an yes, advocate. Yes, she is an advocate. All right, and let's she get a will caller. An advocate for some Red time. Tegisha, let's get a caller. Joy in Johannesburg. Good evening to you, and thanks for calling. Good day. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm all right. Mm. You know, uh, we have a problem with Afri Forum here in South Africa. Um, our our major problem is that uh, there's a lot that has happened, especially in farming areas, whereby we've seen um, always shooting black people. I will take an example in Marikana. Afri Forum is not there to raise issues about uh, the killings of black people. But when it comes to Advocate Jiva, I think there's something that they're trying to hide. They are always after black people in this country. So Afri Forum is actually pushing for everything that has to do with white monopoly and everything that has to do to protect the interests of the white people in our country. All right, Joey, as perspective in Johannesburg, saying that Afri Forum is the nemesis uh, here against the Jiba. Uh, we did speak to Mr. Creel from Afri Forum, saying that their relationship with Kherin now has nothing to do uh, with the private prosecution that they're seeking, and, uh, and especially with the processes of the NPA, arguing that they are litigation processes. You can't have a parallel process happening there. Procedurally, speak to us, uh, Mr. Tekisho, around how this matter ought to be uh, correctly handled. Yes, the, 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 there's been a lot of things that, that has happened. And uh, remember, at some point, Herinel was supposed to be charged and ran away. And the person that was leading this was uh, Advocate Jiba. So, so what then happened is he then took a serious uh, challenge with, with, with uh, uh, Advocate Jiba. And the law is very clear to say, you, 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 you may be able to want to have your private investigation against some individual, but there are processes that you must follow. And one of the processes is that you must get a certificate from the prosecutors to say, no, we are no more continuing with this case. Now, in this instance, it's difficult because they cannot take that decision while there are two issues. First, there is this appeal that is ongoing. But secondly, poison is also charged. And we have to finalize this, this, this issue of poison. And poison is running away. We don't know why, because if she says she has done nothing, she must go to court and be able to claim that in court. She can't do that. All what she does, she runs away, 
and want to come up with small and you know, technical issues that are not really going to help. Mm. And on the basis of that, you cannot therefore want to be able to say, no, I want to be able to apply for a private uh, yeah, okay, we'll test the success or the probability uh, or prospects of this particular private prosecution against Advocate Jiba. Before we go to Musiritzi and Jeff in Pretoria, good evening to you. Hi, my dear. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm fine. Um, I got into my just um, viewing of these things. Yeah? Um, there's a lot of things that we need to in our government, whereby there's a lot of corruption that is going on. There's a lot of uh, misunderstanding mm. whereby you end up not knowing where these cases are going or are not going. I go to me an ad forum. It's not just uh, an apathy. It's an eye to many misunderstanding of the law of what is happening in our country. Mm. All right, Jeff, your line is not so great. We're going to have to let you go, but thanks indeed. I think uh, the crux of it is that Afri Forum may be misinterpreting the law uh, or what they, they're entitled to do uh, in terms of private prosecutions. Um, uh, Mr. Mosiritsiani, maybe you can shed some clarity there whether indeed they are flouting the fair procedures uh, in terms of uh, prosecuting or pursuing the prosecution against Advocate Jiba. I think what is very clear to all of us in this instance is that we have a situation where people are really undermining South African system. The justice system of South Africa is by and large undermined. Now, you have a system where a, a, a racist organization led by one of the people who was supposed to be doing a, a almost a fair procedure in terms of prosecuting whoever must have broken the law, not doing that. Ran away, joined his group that he feels is associated with in order to pursue nothing else but racist agenda to topple a democratically elected government. The procedure in charge, no question about it, that there is no way in which you can undermine the systems that are in there. We have a democratic system. We have people that have been appointed constitutional. But be that as it may, I think it's important that we clarify our people in general. There's a lot scholar who has an opinion or rather has a belief that has been inculcated in his mind that says that anything that is happening in government, it is always corrupt that NPA is corrupt, that our police officers are corrupt, that our courts are corrupt, that our president is corrupt. In general, that is what white monopoly has done, particularly the white monopoly controlled a media to inculcate and to make sure that it gives our people that perception. That is wrong. Our systems are the best that we have. Our laws internationally tested. Everywhere else, they'll tell you that we have the best constitution, be that it might not be favoring the black people at this current moment, yeah. that we've got a system uh, in place. See, and just to, yeah, to, to hold your word there, uh, and uh, we also appreciate that people have the option and choice mm -hmm. of which channel that uh, they want to watch and that they're discerning enough to make up their own mind. Uh, Temba in Guazulu Natal, good evening to you, Victor. In Limpopo, we come to you next. Kunjani Temba. Hey, I'm <laughs> hey. uh, Look, we have to, uh, I'll just take us back a little bit. That uh, if you look what is happening in, um, what, what happened in Libya. And uh, in Libya, the Americans, uh, they, they ever since the one that uh, Colonel Gaddafi, that he sent, he sent someone, uh, if, if you remember, that mm. uh, local B bombing, then he was the enemy of the Americans. In Zimbabwe, we have uh, Mugabe here, and the fact that Mugabe changed the way... Yeah, but well, Temba, I'm just going to ask you to, no. to keep it short, to summarize your view. Okay, then what I'm saying is, uh, the very same thing here is, is, is what's happening. We have this Afri Forum. Afri Forum is after all the black people, they hate nothing else. All right, Potemba, thanks so much. Uh, Victor Limpopo, good evening to you. Hi, Victor. All right, we'll uh, bring it back in studio here, Red uh, Teki Show. There's a media release from advocate Nomkobo Chiba, and she says she's noticed with great disgust media briefing held by Afri Forum, sitting with the, an accused person, General Boyson, whom the NPA had charged with racketeering. 
and uh, and for also uh, for managing a death squad unit referred to as the Kato Manor, which is responsible for the death of 28 uh, people, primarily or who happen to be black. And she says we must question why every forum is on her case, especially if the victim in this case or the accused. Um, we need to question his profile. In other words, that he's white and the, the case that she was uh, pursuing and investigating involves black people. Before we get there, I believe Victor is back with us. Good evening to you, Victor. Hello, good evening. Thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. Uh, I just wish the majority of this country realize what Afi Forum up to. And at the end of the day, the tactics they are doing, I just wish those who are supposed to lead us, they're already siding with them because they're talking about inclusive. When we're supposed to be talking about radical transformation, they are already building their lager. Mm. Lager, lager, African lager. Mm. And they're just opposing anything supposed to be a black person to succeed off. And at the end of the day, by the time we wake up, those especially of Ramaphosa, with the puppet of those... Mm. Victor... Ramaphosa, I don't trust him. I'm from Limpopo, I can tell you. Mm. Ramaphosa is a puppet of the Boers. All right, we're going to leave it there, uh, Victor, you. with uh, his view. I suppose yeah. we can't run away from the politics of it all, no, that the agenda true. of Afri Forum, albeit they supported by other civil rights organizations in their pursuit of what they call justice and equality before the law, uh, that uh, you, you're saying that the, the agenda is not as clear as they like to portray it. No, it's very clear. Uh, it's, uh, Afri Forum, Forum is a white supremacy organization. Their interest is to ensure that they protect and defend whites. Now, in this instance, what they do, they know for a fact that Upoizen is facing serious charges uh, that he has to go to court for. Now, they want to defocus us, not to focus on those charges anymore, but to focus on what they claim, that now they want to have private prostitution on, on, on advocate Jiba, it's not going to work. Because there is no way that we will agree as black people that understands her, that's respected, that knows the work that she has been doing to allow that thing to happen while we are still alive. We are going to contest that and I'm sure we are going to do it successfully. Okay, let's uh, get to Mike from Pretoria. Good evening to you, Mike, and thanks for holding. What's your view or your question? Hi, Mike. Hello. Yes, please turn down your TV set. Hello, my friend. I'm not, I'm not Mike. I am Linda Matram. All right, I beg your pardon. Good evening to you. Oh, good evening, Matrina and Mother. Yeah, we put Ninja. I want to comment on this um, Afri Forum. Mm. Afri Forum has got a very bad history for them to come and uh, impose on us. Uh, it's so sad that they behave like bullies and uh, calling themselves legal people. This is very, very much unfair. Uh, in fact, the more they hear in the television, they remind us of the oppression and exploitation and degradation of the indigenous African people. And it is worrying the primary because uh, I think the only solution is that the African people must stand up before we see these white masses all over in the streets of South Africa, the African people must stand up. I think I concur with the, the guy who just spoke there saying they are beating, they are lacha. And African people must be careful of taking off the land again, especially Zuma, who is for radical transformation, and other relevant political organizations whose land has been taken illegally. So, uh, Maduga, what I'm saying is that African program must be boycotted mm. by all the African people. All right, Mwanala, thanks so much for your viewpoint. Of course, we do have a constitutional democracy uh, where each has uh, the right of association and existence, but point taken. Olani and PE, good evening to you. Good evening, ma'am. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you very much. Uh, ma'am,
Um, I just want to put up a comment on this issue of an Afro Forum. Um, in fact, I want to concur with the last speaker. Um, I think it is when we're supposed to wake up. Uh, in South Africa currently, if we, if we see things right, South Africa is getting divided into black and white, you know? And now that these white people, they've lost uh, political power, they're trying to come in through to the puppets that they are putting. Now they're trying means and ways to make the black community to, 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 to panic in whatever way. Because there is nothing like this Afri Forum as, a, as an institution that is credible. Because I'll give an example now. There was a white guy now who has, um, uh, who, who the, the, the dogs abused a black woman. You never had a set with this, with a word with this Afri Forum. Mm. But this Afri Forum is made to be something that is championing the rights of the people who are, un who are, who are not heard. Yeah. By, Tolana, by, by we're going to have to leave it at the NPE. Thanks so much. As we mentioned, Akali Creo, we had a, a conversation with him. In fact, even Advocate Khairi now, when he first uh, was appointed as their private prosecutor, especially around what they stand for, their mandate, and uh, mm. what their constitu uh, constituencies are. But uh, we're not there at the moment. Uh, Retsiane, just again in terms of what happens next, because uh, the NPA and even the security cluster being clouded with this uh, veneer of a conspir conspiracy that they tend to protect those that are in the President Jacob Zuma's close circles. If they're not going to act, the, the next saving grace will be AFRI Forum and their pri uh, private prosecution. What is your view on that? The, the, the war that is ongoing of perceptions, that is always on media, that we paint one as, as being corrupt and we paint the other one as holier than thou. It, it is always one on as to who, how much, has a lot of money to can pursue such an interest. But be that as it may, justice in South Africa is in simple terms. We've got separation of power. We know that we've got our state, we've got our, our legislature, and we've got our courts. It's as simple as that. And above all, the Constitutional Court has just given a, a, a rather a high court in this instance, has given an indication that the right of prosecution remains or prosecutorial rights in South Africa remains with the NPA. We have the Director of Public Prosecution. Now, any other form that we see here, particularly the private prosecution, that seems to be, you know, going on in the face, in the light of, of justice, which, which indeed is not, will never take South Africa anywhere. In actual fact, I was expecting that every forum will represent South Africans in another inspector and say that in this instance we will stand for, for injustice of all South Africans, be black, be white, whatever the case might be, but that injustice that has been occurring. And rather, coming from a history that South Africa is, that would have pursued much of the cases that were hidden by apartheid system and say, these cases were wrong, we stand up to make sure that we get closer to our citizens. But in this instance, one caller is right to say that the division is enlarged. Instead of bringing people together, Afri Forum seems to be standing in front and making sure that black and white continue to be divided. Such an institution is not needed in South Africa. We don't need such institution that will integrate and make sure that it it emphasizes racism within South Africa. This is nothing else but an agenda to make sure that you continue to say those that were appointed through proper procedures, those, a government that was appointed in democratic processes is an illegitimate, that it was better. That's why you would have people finding pleasure, finding pride in wearing an Afrikaner or rather an apartheid flag, even in today's terms. South Africa, majority of the members of Afri Forum will be proud to say it was better days for them in an apartheid days. We need to find a mechanism of living together. An Afri Forum should have found a mechanism of making sure that it brings South Africans together. It's not doing that. All what right, so Red, Red Anne, the, yeah, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks indeed for your time. Very briefly, yeah. uh, Lucky, Delicious. in the sense the, the pres uh, success prospects of uh, Afri Forum in their pursuit no, of Fajiba. No, no, no. They, they are really non-existent. But there are two issues that I think we must say is that firstly the NPA must without fear or favor continue to ensure that they criminally charge poison. They must make sure that it happens. But secondly, they must also charge the one that ran away called Gerinel, knowingly that no, they are going to come up, up, uh, uh, they are going to come and also charge him. Remember the issue of the 900 where he bought things 
uh, to be listened and all of that. But all of a sudden, there's nothing happening. So we want him to be charged as well. But the last thing is that Advocate Jiba, when he's finished with all of these things, must, must claim the hell out of them because they have, they have dealt with this industry. Mm. All right, so you're referring to the spite uh, or the rogue unit mm. in SARS in terms of uh, Khalid yes, Nazi's involvement? Yes, involvement. because he was part of it. He was working with that, that rogue unit and he was giving them money and they bought those things that can be able to listen to people. And that was unconstitutional, it was wrong. All right, so we're going to see how this, this plays out. I'm sure it's going to be a long and bumpy road. But thanks as always. Uh, Lucky Tegisha, Transform RSA Deputy President, Musiritziane, South African Liberty Foundation Chairperson, and you at home, our most valued pa uh, panelists. Thanks as always uh, for calling in. We take a quick break. We'll see you shortly.